Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be week five of our UBL matches. This is going to be against Hawk. Well, in fact, he's actually the person who reached out to me to join this league. But right off the bat, you can see a little bit of the team matchup. I was pretty scared of his team. So in all honesty, the number one thing that I was afraid of was that dang Bronzong. I knew my team didn't match up too, too well against the Bronzong and he plays his Bronzong really well. And it was just going to be a huge, huge, huge pain. I didn't know exactly how I was going to take it out. But in all honesty, my thinking was to run sleep out on my Venus or just put it to sleep and then uh, try to deal with it in some way from there. But uh, yeah, I haven't seen this battle <laughs> since I did it, so let's see. I don't remember at all what I lead with. I feel like I led with the Venusaur, but I don't quite remember. I feel like he would lead with the Bronzong in this situation, but yeah, okay, so there's the Venusaur, Bronzong. I think I might have actually led this specifically for the Bronzong just to, oh no, it's a random watch specifically for the Bronzong to try to put it to sleep. But here I got the solid um, matchup and I felt the Bronzong coming in. I feel like I did. So I feel like I went for the sleep out of here, right? Um, I knew this thing was not gonna stay in. I had to think of whatever was gonna come in. Oh, so I did also think that the Crobat could come in in this situation. So I also wanted to put that to sleep even though, I mean, it was gonna be a waste of a sleep powder because I really wanna put the Bronzong to sleep. I'm terrified of the dang Bronzong, but it's fine. I miss the sleep powder. I'm kind of upset at from turn one. I don't really uh, know what to do with this thing, so I just switch out. As he just goes for the rocks, we bring in the Serena, um, I believe just to try to knock this thing off. He goes for the side wave, which I'm kind of confused by. I'm thinking it's a possible misgen. I'm not entirely sure. I would uh, like to know from him, but I go into this thing to try to... Um, eat a hit and possibly um, cause a switch with a possible rapid spin and a possible knockoff. Those are all possibilities. But I double into my Greninja as he goes into the Crobat. I think I read this. Yeah, yeah, I, I must have read this because uh, my Greninja is Scarfed. And um, Scarfed Greninja is going to be a bit of a theme. And unfortunately, I just go for the Ice Beam. Dark Pulse was probably the better play, but I really just wanted to hit what was in front of me. I didn't want to um, have him, you know, not read the scarf and stay in but he did read the scarf so we don't get any momentum going on really there but um i can bring this thing in this thing's i imagine is gonna wall pretty well but he reveals the light screen which of course is just going to it's gonna kind of ruin my day because i believe i do have a special venusaur which again a special venusaur can't really touch the bronzong my only real hope for it is to um is to try and sleep powder it, if I remember correctly. But here, here he goes for the Volt Switch. I think, I feel like I must have expected a Switch. Yes, Sleep Powder. Again, we missed a dang, a dang Sleep Powder. And uh, I'm getting kind of flustered at this point, but it's fine. I go out into uh, my Delphox because there's no Hydreigon anymore, so there's no real dedicated like scenario for this thing to be in, except it can wall the... the the Bronzong, unless it has Earthquake, but even then, will probably be fine. But um, that does force the switch as he goes into this thing. Now, I was super upset because I was certain, I was certain that Delphox got Energy Ball. It doesn't, it gets Grass Knot, and we all know, Grass Knot does nothing to a Rotom Wash. It weighs apparently nothing. But um, I kind of read that, I guess. I set up a sub, eat my Citrus Berry, and I'm hoping to magician away its item. Uh, I don't think it's revealed an item yet, if I don't, if I remember correctly, but either way, we magician the leftovers away. So, now, we'll be getting a little bit healthier, we'll, we're in a decent spot with this uh, Delphox, I guess. But, uh, it just Volt Switches out, breaks the sub, and uh, I guess I get a free switch, a uh, free hit on something. In comes this thing, oh no, I don't, I, I, I think I went first, okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I probably asked about it, so, light screen wears off, it's fine. Um, yeah, part of that whole, like, um, uh, substitute sweet sequence was to burn some turns, but in this moment, I completely forgot about Crunch. That's on me, 100% on me. There was no reason for Delphox to go down that early. I just completely forgot about Crunch. It crunches me, and I go down. Um, I go into this thing. I'm thinking, I'm thinking it could possibly, you know, be choice at this point. I don't think I do ever get to see the item. I don't think so. It's it's either going to be Choice or Z-Move, but either way, I feel like uh, going into this thing is going to be the best option for me. I think I, I, I just go for the Moonblast. Does not much, but I do get a drop, so that's a thing, I guess. I don't know. 
uh, now those pesky psi waves. But I'm fine for now, I'm fine for now. I think I read a switch and I go for a Scald, if I remember correctly. And I really desperately wanted to burn this Crobat. No, I go for the Shadow Ball. Okay, so I just uh, try to hit what's in front of me. I, I would have I would wished I'd gone for a Scald. We do get the special defense drop, so at this point, I'm thinking, um, this Crobat, getting this Crobat low enough is going to be a uh, huge for my Greninja later on because Greninja Surf is going to do just over 50%, so as long as it's in that range, I should be fine later on, especially if this thing goes down later, but it pulls a double into the Rotom as I go for the Scald. Oh, and judging from the Shadow Ball damage, a Scald would have taken that um, Crobat out, so, that's, so he knew that, that's why I went into the Rotom. We do get the burn, which is going to be kind of huge later on, as he sets up another light screen. And uh, I'm pretty positive that we saw the last one go for eight turns. So in my head, I'm thinking we gotta, you know, stall this out all over again as I go for the energy ball, just trying to get a little bit of damage, trying to do something here. Um, either way, I'm I feel like I kind of just hold my ground, yeah, because um, I'm not too too concerned about. This Rotom right now. I don't know if I predicted here or not. I'm really curious to see whether or not I I tried I tried something out. I feel like I scalded here. I feel like I scalded. Yeah, okay. I scalded expecting it to Volt Switch out. And uh, yeah, we do get another burn, which was again pretty darn huge. It was pretty darn huge in this situation, because now I can kind of wall somewhat, maybe kind of. Um. So let's see. I think I switch out. Yeah. Okay. I do. I believe I go into Mega Venusaur here. I do. Uh, this thing is a super defensive Mega Venusaur. I mean, you know, Mega Venusaur is naturally really defensive. So, I just try to wall this thing off. Uh, it's not going to poison me. I can uh, synthesis up if I have to. I believe the set is just, if I remember correctly, Giga Drain, um, Sludge Bomb, Synthesis, and um, Sleep Powder. Right. So, I'm going to wall this thing for days. I'm going to... I'm going to... I... In my head, at the moment, I'm thinking, this thing doesn't have any kind of recovery, so... Uh, I don't mind, um, just stalling this thing out. I don't... It's gonna poison jab me continually. Um, it doesn't want anything else to get, you know, kind of hit here, so... That's fine, I get it. Especially at the range that his Crobat's at. Um, as long as my Venusaur can get out of this exchange reasonably healthy, then... More than... More than enough for me. As the light screen wears off, so we do successfully just stall out the light screen here. As it just continues to poison jab into my Venusaur. Can't be poisoned, thankfully. Oh, yeah, okay, so this is a moment right here. We actually get a crit, which was awful for us. I'm gonna pause right here because this is a huge, huge moment, right? So I get that crit, which leaves my Venusaur at 75%. Now, if I did not get that crit, then that would have given me another turn. I would have 100% synthesis up again to get myself up to full and then let it do like another 15%. I believe it was doing something like that. But that leaves me at a little bit lower HP than I would have been if I just gone for that synthesis. So that crit taking me out and leaving me at 75% where I could have been at about 85% that was kind of huge in my head like I was genuinely freaking out and could not be more scared and then I see the Crobat come in so we saw from damage output earlier that Crobat is not terribly bulky so I count out max attack Crobat Brave Bird obviously we saw earlier that it had leftovers without any, any life orb or band or anything like that uh it does about 69% max to my specific of uh, Mega Venusaur that was like 74 75% so I was comfortable staying in and holding my ground in that situation so yeah we're just gonna played here again my thinking is it's so much more important for me to get that damage off through recoil and i believe i go for sludge mob if i remember correctly just to get that damage off so that um greninja can clean up later on i do go for the sludge bomb it does enough i calc this out it does more than enough right for something to pick it up later and for me that's more or less all that i need at this point i'm just thinking get rid of the rotom and uh greninja can kind of freely surf if I get the Bronzong low enough as well. But it goes for the Roost, which kind of, you know, hurt. It kind of demoralized me for, for a second there. I know how much of a pain Roost Crobat can be, but it's not defensive, it's, it's more offensive, so I'm thinking it's fine, but this is going to end up letting him win this 1v1 between um, Crobat and Venusaur, which, you know, he was gonna win anyway, but he's gonna win this at about 50%, where he could have been at about like 15, 20%, which, which, you know, does really suck, but I'm confident enough going into my Greninja here. It is at just about 50%, and I know that the Surf is going to do enough if 
uh, if it lets me. But in comes the Rotom, and this is where the burn comes in huge, right? Because um, you're gonna see how much the Surf does. It had to have been super specially defensive. Now I think I probably take it out with two Surfs anyway, but it looks like it might be a roll, and I'm not quite sure. I could have gotten a little roll um, in either of those turns, but the burn absolutely guarantees it. It's going to be a two-hit KO from that range no problem so now that this threat's gone he does go and bring in um this dang heracross and i have to switch out obviously don't remember what i switched into but i guess we will see i go into the serena i probably just um sack this thing off you know maybe i can take a hit i don't know but i, I don't think i outspeed and unfortunately we have to you know just deal with risking moxie at this point uh, clearly I wasn't uh, too concerned about that at this point in the battle. But no, it does reveal Guts. At least Flame Orb, so... We're in okay position here. It's We're fine. We're totally fine. Now, at this moment, I cocked out everything. This uh, Meloetta does not have Psychic. If it did have Psychic, I would have been... I would have taken it out easily, but instead I only have the Dazzling Gleam. I don't remember why exactly, but I'll look into it. It's fine. Um... But unfortunately, I have to give up the Meloetta just to get um, that big chunk of damage off on this thing, which really does suck. I would have loved um, Meloetta to get some more love and just to, you know, do more things in general. And I wanted to keep it alive. It would have been so huge um, later in the game as well, but unfortunately, we just had to let it go down for damage. And at this point, I think I lost because uh, the Bronzong is way too healthy for me to be able to take it out. And... In comes the Bronzong, right? And I can't really do anything to it. And Gyro Ball to a Scarfed Greninja is going to do so, so much. But I go out into my Primarina here. It's, and I'm thinking I don't have the damage to either take out the the Bronzong or the Thunderous. Because I'm only, Greninja Surf is only doing about 50%. So is Dark Pulse, but it doesn't really matter what I go for. Oh, yeah, no. I... I do switch to, to try to get some damage off on the um, on the Bronzong, but also so I can switch up to Dark Poles at this point. But I just go for some damage, and it's not it's simply not not going to be enough at this point because um, I'm not I I am getting some wonderful wonderful damage onto this Bronzong, but it's not going to be nearly enough to deal with Thunderous uh, later on. So. At this point, I'm just kind of thinking that I lost. Oh, I'm sorry, there's Crobat. I completely forgot about the Crobat. So, actually, so I'm still thinking that I have to surf. But, as soon as he sees that I, as soon as I see that he let this Crobat take that much damage, now it's 100% in my head. I can go for the Dark Pulse because I was still, he was still at that 50% mark where it's kind of that in-between mark where uh, surf, where I, it's going to force me to go for surf because Dark Pulse simply doesn't have the damage here. And I'm still thinking I'm locked in a surf right now, but as soon as he switches this in and lets me deal that much damage to it, now I know that my Greninja can freely go for Dark Pulse, and it's it's going to be a lost cause anyway because the Bronzong is too healthy, the Thunderous is going to do damage to me, but at the very least, you know, Greninja can uh, try to do some things. I'm still thinking this is a completely lost game because I... Again, I simply don't have the damage. And even here, right, I'm, which still, okay, I have to pause this one more time, I'm sorry. This is my thought process, right? Even if I do flinch this Thunderous, it's still a 50-50 roll to two hit KO with two Dark Pulses. Then I'm thinking that I don't have the damage against the Bronzong because the Bronzong is sitting at around 70-ish percent. We've already confirmed a lot earlier in the match that this thing is max HP, max special defense. And just capping that out, I have no chance of being able to take out the Bronzong from that range. So I'm thinking all is lost. My only my only out is to flinch the Thunderous and get the 50-50 roll to two hit KO. And on top of that, get a crit onto that Bronzong. So that's my thought process as I go into this turn. And I just go for Dark Pulse. I hope for the best. We'll see what happens. And I do exactly 50 it looks like, and we get the flinch. So I'm thinking, I'm, right now I'm kind of freaking out and I'm thinking, we take this thing out we have a chance, but then I realize, no, we don't, because I'm not doing enough damage to the Bronzong. So I'm thinking in my head, my only single deer out right now is a crit. And it turns out we get the crit. 
We get the crit. Now, I found out later, I found out after the match that assuming that the Bronzong is, is uninvested, which we have to assume, even to a Scarfed Greninja, there was no damage roll that would have taken me out with a Gyro Ball. So I would have taken a hit and I would have gotten two Dark Pulses off anyway, but a Greninja came through with everything I needed a Greninja to do, and we end up taking the narrowest of 1-0 victories in the craziest possible way. And yeah, again, GG, I'm really tired. With that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll be once again out.